a reading from Ezekiel. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have trans transgressed against me to this very day. Their descendants are impudent and stubborn. I'm sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there's been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes. O you who are enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of the maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill. A reading from Corinthians 2. I know a person in Christ who, 14 years ago, was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, uh, no. Okay, God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speak speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen of me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, said, where did this man get all this? What, wis what is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hand? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are, his, are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. 
Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no need of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointing with, anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace through the Holy Spirit from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know if you've noticed from the scarcity in the pews, but it's travel season, <laughs> at least in the United States. According to statistics, 53% of Americans are taking summer vacations this year. 53%, that's pretty good. Popular destinations include national parks, tropical resorts, historic cities such as New York and Washington, D.C., Philadelphia and Boston, and even such out-of-the-way places as the Corn Palace and Walled Run, <laughs> both of which are in South Dakota. But of all these popular destinations, there's one thing I can honestly say I don't think I've ever seen. I've never seen anyone travel anywhere without luggage. We pack stuff. Nobody ever takes a trip anywhere like the one that Jesus describes in our Gospel reading today. Nobody leaves on a journey with the instructions, take nothing for your journey. No bread, no bag, no money in your belt. You can wear sandals, but don't put on two tunics. Yeah, all you get is a staff and a pair of sandals and the clothes on your back. Have fun! <laughs> well, that would certainly save time packing the car, now wouldn't it? <laughs> but who would go on a trip like that? Doesn't sound like much fun to me, but most of us, when we're planning our summer vacation, <clears throat> we make long lists of all the stuff that we believe will be essential for our trip. <clears throat> kind of take into account where we're going. We take into account what we might encounter while we're there, and we take into account the weather that might come, come across us. And then things that we can do in the downtime. Who hasn't taken a deck of cards with them on a trip? Oh, John, wait, hasn't taken a deck of cards? No, he I, I answered it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We pack all kinds of stuff to prepare for any number of situations. And it, does anybody here ever go on a trip without extra money? No. I can't think of any, anyone that would. We always take a bit of money for activities and maybe a little bit extra for some contingencies. So who would go on a trip that Jesus describes? And just how is this trip supposed to work? I know I personally would be a little bit more than hesitant. I, I'm kind of thinking about the trip Anna and I took to Hawaii earlier this year. We bought a new extra large suitcase just for the trip. And by the time we flew out of Pasco, that thing was full. <laughs> and we packed enough clothes for both of us for the whole week. And we had some extra food along, because after all, I'm gluten-free, and you never know when you're going to find stuff that isn't gluten-free, and no alternative. So we had extra money so we could pick up a few things for ourselves and for a few friends and relatives. I mean, where else are you going to go and find chocolate-covered macadamia nuts? <laughs> 
Any of that scenario sound familiar to anybody else? I mean, we tried to, we, even Anna and I tried to use extra room or stuff when we packed. But by the time we left Hawaii, we had trouble closing that enormous suitcase. <laughs> I just don't think I'd be comfortable with the kind of trip that Jesus describes and tells his dis disciples to take. Take a staff, you can wear sandals, and the clothes on your back. That's it. Nothing else. What's up with that? It seems to me that Jesus is sending his disciples on a mission trip to build their faith as well as to bring faith to other people. Sure, the nature of this trip is to share the good news of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God in word and deed and to share the call for repentance and heal the sick and cast out demons, but in doing the work of Jesus, and depending on the provision of others, the same way Jesus does, the disciples would begin to develop their own sense of just how powerful faith in Jesus might be. You see, the one thing that Jesus does send them out with that's most important is something that takes absolutely no room in the suitcase at all. Jesus sends them out with authority authority over unclean spirits. And through this authority, the disciples will discover that the spirit of hospitality is a clean spirit, and it will show itself in the generosity of others. The spirit that denies hospitality is an unclean spirit. Well, the disciples have authority over that one, so they can just cast it out. With the authority of Jesus, the disciples are able to call others to repentance to turn from their evil ways, to be cleansed of their unclean spirits, and to find themselves embraced into the kingdom of God. Now this is not some kind of resort vacation that lasts only a week or two. The kingdom of God happens to be a place that lasts forever. It cannot be destroyed. It cannot wear out. It cannot fail because it's not a traditional kingdom like England or Saudi Arabia or Jordan. It's, it's not even a fantasy kingdom like, or an imaginary kingdom like, uh, you know, Disney's Magic Kingdom or the Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. This is a spiritual kingdom where God rules. God rules over your heart and God will guide your way. And with God guiding you away from unclean spirits and into the spirit of love toward all people, suddenly you're able to embrace the spirit of generosity. And along with that comes the spirit of hospitality. So maybe we're not willing to take a trip like Jesus sends out his disciples on, but perhaps we have enough faith to host those who are taking a trip like that. And maybe we already have. Perhaps there are some in this room who are depending on Jesus to provide their daily bread, or maybe a place to sleep, or just need to hear a word from the Lord. Most of us will find ourselves in a spiritual desert once in a while. And I hope that this house of worship provides a spiritual oasis, a place to cleanse and feed those who need to hear the voice of Jesus or just see Jesus at work and to help build their faith. My prayer is that we will continue to embrace the spirit of generosity and the spirit of hospitality that resides in this place well into the future so that all people who find themselves on a spiritual pilgrimage near and far, who come to us in the name of the Lord, will find a welcome and all pilgrims who dispose to bestow the peace of the Lord upon this place, will find a place of comfort and spiritual rest. You don't need a passport. You don't need an airplane ticket. You don't need bread or bags or money in your dump. Jesus feeds us on himself every week with his body and blood. All you need to experience the 
generosity that Jesus has brought here is to come. Just show up. And with God's help, you will find faith in Jesus in this place. And you will find that the Spirit of the Lord has imparted God's authority, and we 